live. Let's turn this down. We're live. We're live. Good afternoon, everybody, or whatever time it is for you. Just wait a few minutes for people to get on. So I, I've done a few live streams in the evening, and I thought I'd do one during the day. Uh, in case you get some other people who are who are on during the day and had an idea of doing a, a stream about arranging on guitar something that is very important especially if you're somebody who who likes to enjoy playing by themselves um, especially in times like these we may not always be playing with people and you might learn a guitar part for a song and then you're sort of left with just one part that is a little bit isolated right from the whole song so you may not be incorporating the the other elements of the song including the bass or the keyboards so that's something that i i uh, i love teaching um or at least you know working on myself so why don't i warm up with uh, a song that um, all of you will recognize, I'm sure, and kind of get going on, on playing a little bit and then talking about what's going on in terms of arranging. Um, and there's a hint here, I'm gonna be playing a jazz standard. And um, learning jazz is a very important thing to do if you really want to um, sort of understand more advanced vocabulary but it's not it's not required but it's something i would recommend if you want to arrange for guitar so <laughs>
So hopefully you recognize that. That was What a Wonderful World by Louis Armstrong. Arguably one of his, his biggest hits. Probably his biggest hit. Um, Louis Armstrong uh, is a household name and for good reason. He's Him and Duke Ellington are considered to be really our versions of, of Beethoven or Mozart, meaning, not our, meaning um, if, you're, if you're in America, it would be America's versions of, of, of our Beethoven, our, our Mozart. Um, and, you know, uh, unfortunately a lot of Americans uh, sort of aren't aware of the, of, the, of the true genius of some of these musicians, partially because it was you know, getting up to almost a hundred years ago that they hit the scene. Um, so, um, that's something to look into is sort of America's, uh, roots in jazz. And it's considered to be, you know, the, the, the jazz era is considered to be the greatest songwriting period of America, meaning it's called the great American songbook. So something to check out, but it's all an introduction to the point of, if I have this beautiful song with a beautiful chord progression, a beautiful melody, timeless, it'll never grow old. What can I do with it on guitar? Yeah, Skin Dweller says uh, such a cool tune, haven't heard in a while. Yeah, um, it's one of those songs that, that um, kind of comes back into the, into the culture a little bit and then, and then you won't hear it for a while. So um, that's something that I'll talk about in the stream here as far as if I have a chord progression. And right now I'm not playing advanced jazz chords. This, this song is actually quite accessible. I'm not playing, you know, insane sharp nines and, and uh, minor seven flat fives everywhere. You could always reharmonize any song to do that, but this is just straight, more straight major and minor chords. So if I have a progression C, E minor, F, E minor, D minor, C, E7 to A minor. So, so far I've got a progression, but it doesn't necessarily sound exactly like I'm playing every aspect of the song. So then I would say, okay, let me learn the melody, which is what you want to do. You know, a lot of us, we, we play songs and we learn songs that have vocals. And we say, well, that's, that's great. I don't have to deal with that because the, the singer will deal with that. But I really encourage you to start learning melodies on the guitar, especially if you're somebody who, who wants to take your guitar playing further. And you can train your ear by learning not only the scales, but also the melodies of songs. So that's something that jazz students do. And that's partially why um, it's a good idea to, to study that stuff. But if you just take this melody, you can learn it by itself. And play it, play it, you know, as if you're as if you're performing it for somebody, play it with intention. And then you understand what what chords do those notes fall under? C chord. E minor to F, back to E minor. D minor to C, E7 to A minor. And that's another step that most, that some people forget at the beginning, is it's not just about the melody, it's about what is the harmony underneath the chords. And when you get, and you want to practice those separately, okay, for a while, for years even. And I talked last live stream about using a looper pedal to do things like that, where you can loop the, the chord progression and then sort of play the melody over it. But let's say I've, I've done this for a while and I want to get a little more advanced and arrange it for the guitar. I can play that melody, but instead of just going here, I can play it over a C chord. And then the next melody note is here. I could just play it by itself, or I could play it over an E minor chord. And just two bars in, already this has another, this has a whole nother life to it. 
Uh, now it gets a little more complex as you move up the fretboard, as is normal with the guitar. But this is like an F shape of the caged system, which I have a video on the cage system, that uh, is a little more advanced. So, you know, you could always just play the bass by itself, meaning just an F. If you don't know the chord shape up here. F, and then back to E minor. Now we have a D minor, D minor seven actually, and the note, the melody note is here. It's right in the chord. Next melody note is there over a C chord. And then an E7. And we've all probably seen this E7. And then the next melody note is here over an A minor. Okay. F, F minor. some bass movement. So easier said than done, I know, um, and something to work on over time. And this is just to introduce the idea for you. If it's something you can work towards slowly, that's, that's a huge start. Um, and like I said, what a lot of people forget to do is, is they forget to learn a melody, whether it's the vocal melody or, or the melody to a song they love. Usually it's the vocal melody. And if you do that, you can start to arrange these songs for just one guitar. Um, how's it sounding out there? We only, have, we've, we've, uh, I didn't really do a sound check on the guitar. So is the guitar sounding all right? Feel free to say hi and uh, request something if you want. If I know it by ear, uh, chances are I could play it for you. So, um, yeah, feel free to say hello and ask questions about this. So, uh, I don't know how to play Caribbean Blue by Enya. Sorry. But, um, but I'll, I'll, I'll check that out. I'll check that song out. Good. I'm glad it sounds good. So, is this making sense? And let me know your thoughts on it. Um, and let's take... So, that's a song that's... You know, it's, it's an old song. Um, let's take a different song. Um, I don't know whole, whole the scene either. I'll have to check out that stuff. Uh, I like Enya, but I don't know a lot of the, a lot of the songs. Um, let's have some fun. This is a song that uh, I may mess up some lyrics, but that hopefully a lot of you will be aware of. Oh, good. Alice says that's exactly what uh, she's trying to learn. That's great. Um, what if I take a more modern song? Um, okay, this is going to be quite a tough one, and I, I plan to do a lesson on this later. But um, let's say we have Africa. Okay, in the, in the 1980s, it was recorded with a lot of keyboards, a lot of instruments. Here's a nice one, Brandy. Also, I'd want to learn the cover, What a Wonderful World. Yeah. So I can teach that at some point. I'll teach a lesson on that. Um, and that's a great segue into jazz, is learning a song like that. So I've been playing with my fingers. Maybe I'll try to play a little bit with my, with my pick as well to show you that it's possible on anything to, to arrange a song. Um, all right. Forgotten words 
so ancient valley. He turned to me as if to say, Hurry, boy, it's waiting. Wild dogs, how about it? They grow restless, longing for some solitary company. I know that I must do what's right. Sure as Kilimanjaro rises like Olympus upon the Serengeti. Right. So um, that was kind of a little all, all over the place because I went from playing with a pick and then I wanted to use finger style. Then I went back to a pick. So apologize if that was a little messy. But then I wanted to use a looper at the end because I kind of wanted to show you uh, sort of a buffet of, of ideas that you could use for songs, meaning there's different techniques that will bring out different, uh, different um, sort of elements of arranging. So when I use my fingers, 
I started to play the melody on, I'll get to your, to your comments in a sec, but let me talk about this first. I started to play the melody, like I was mentioning earlier. I sang the song, I pretty much played the normal chords, and then I started going. That's something you could do. You could work towards that. You know, if you feel like you've hit a plateau and you're playing, and you say, you know, I'm nailing these chord progressions to a song I know. What do I do from here? You can always add a challenge by saying, I'm going to arrange this for one guitar, and that's called solo guitar, and it's not easy. You know, I had a, a restaurant gig three hours every other week for a few, for a couple years, a few years maybe. And I brought a looper pedal uh, because half the time I wanted to play with a looper, my hands would get tired. But if I were to do that right now, I'd probably not bring a looper pedal uh, because, you know, I've worked on this and it takes years. And after you work on this enough, you sort of get the hang of, you know, I'm going to basically play one guitar for everything chord progression, melody, and sometimes I'll take a break, sometimes I'll just play only single notes, sometimes I'll only play chords, but that's what that's something that will always challenge you. Um, okay, I'm sorry about that. Hopefully my connection is, is better now. Um, can't tell. Come on. Okay, so uh, we, had a, we had a couple comments asking if I'm going to teach those, Alice. And yeah, I'd like to teach both What a Wonderful World and Africa at some point for sure. Um, and that's something that I appreciate your feedback because that will remind me, hey, you know, I should teach that. So I'll put those on the list. Um, by the way, I do have a, a Patreon that I've just started, and um, it would be great if you would check it out to support me. Um, just for $2 a month is the basic and you could get tabs for free. Well, not for free, for $2 a month. And you can get the tabs, access to that, download them. I've got, I think, four or five, I think five tabs up now. I just started it. So it's in the description of this video and of my last, I don't know, four or five videos. It's in the description, first line. It's patreon.com slash mtguitar. And uh, yeah, it, it would be mean a lot if you supported me. Um, this is a channel that I've been getting really great feedback on and, and that warms my heart because I get so much joy from music and from guitar. And um, if, if that's happening for you, that's, that's amazing to me and that's the kind of thing that keeps me going, keeps me making videos. And um, I also am offering private lessons on Zoom and uh, starting to get a little more busy with that but if you if you want to to get a lesson from me or lessons just email me it's in the description below as well and ask for rates all right and always feel free to say hi in the comment section of any videos and i will respond um you've probably noticed i'm quite active in responding oh thanks tommy appreciate it i uh storm no i don't I'll learn that. There's so many songs, so many great songs to learn. Um, let me play some some um, James Taylor. And let me just burn through a couple more songs. I have a gig tonight in Wyoming. I play in a country band in Wyoming. Uh, so, so I have to go in probably 20 minutes. So this is great hanging out with you all. And uh, let's try some James Taylor. This is called Something in the Way She Moves. Something in the way that she moves Looks my way or calls my name It seems to leave this trouble behind and If I'm feeling down or blue Troubled by some foolish game She always seems to make me change my mind And 
I feel fine I'm 15. <laughs> okay, so Daniel. Um, James Taylor is somebody that uh, has had a has a 50 long, year long career, but he was most probably known in this in the 70s. James Taylor is somebody who I thought of for this video because when I'm thinking about arranging on guitar, I think about great acoustic guitar players. People like James Taylor, people like Paul Simon. Um, people like John Mayer, um, people like Tom Petty, um, or, you know, Tommy Emmanuel, Andy McKee, okay, I don't know if you know those guys, um, you know, and, and so, so many others, I, I'm sure I'm, I'm you know, they're, they're, I can think of on and on and on, um, and these are people, you know, these are people that are great on the acoustic guitar, and they could basically play a whole song on on an acoustic and so Daniel you're confused you're asking what I'm telling you who James Taylor is he's, he's an acoustic guitar player from the 70s but these I'm, I'm talking about a bunch of different players that are really great at acoustic and this is one of them James Taylor he created a new style of finger picking check him out uh, his biggest hit is fire and rain that song and he was discovered by the Beatles um, people like Paul McCartney and George Harrison and John Lennon all were great acoustic players right Blackbird didn't have any drums or anything so this is kind of what I'm talking about um, so something you should consider is getting into finger style getting into playing with your fingers getting into the artists that can do that really well like the ones I just mentioned and sort of digging into um, playing alternating bass lines or you know Travis picking or um, different different styles like that and seeing if you can give it a go and so sometimes it's easier to do it with your fingers than with your pick Django Reinhardt exactly so Django Reinhardt is you know the the father of gypsy jazz and uh, you know I 
right? So that's the kind of style where you're going to be ripping it if you if you do it, do it well, and that's something to, to look at. So always try to be find the next player to be inspired by, and and arranging for solo guitar is is very advanced, but it's something you can work on as a beginner by learning melodies, by learning finger style, by learning some basic chords and chord melody. All right, if that makes any sense. So, um, why don't I play a, a fingerstyle song that is quite famous by Bob Dylan. And this is a song that's, you know, one of his bigger hits um, with a capo, and it's more on the acoustic side. Landslide, so Daniel, I do have a, a lesson on Landslide. Um, and uh, it's actually does it does quite well with with the channel so check out landslide MT guitar landslide and you know I have a, a lesson on that I'll play a, a verse of this so my love took it down climb the mountain sang that a little low probably probably I could bump that up an octave sometimes I rely on my bass notes a little too much all right so here's a song called don't think twice it's all right and this song is a great example of Travis picking something I'll cover later where basically you're going to use your thumb as a bass okay and any great finger style player will know what this is if you if you act like your thumb is doing the job of the bass and automatically start arranging songs for guitar quite successfully because you have this you know this this quarter note rhythm that's going so let me play a couple verses I'll probably forget I, I don't play some of these songs as much anymore so I might forget some lyrics
So I went from singing it and basically playing Bob Dylan's part, meaning his finger picking part, which is already quite complex. I went from that and uh, so Daniel, I don't know any Irish songs. I'm sorry, man. But uh, thanks for your request. Yeah, I saw your comment earlier as well. I don't know any Irish songs. Um, but I'll, I'll, I'll gladly learn some. I, like, I love Irish music. I'm, I'm part Irish myself. Um, I love Celtic music. And um, Okay, yeah, just yeah, throw some suggestions out and uh, I'll, I'll look them up after the stream. So I went from singing the song and basically playing Bob Dylan's guitar part into playing a melody on it. Okay, so that's something that uh, you could you could look into, but just the act of finger style will advance your playing, right? And will get you closer to being able to do something like that. <clears throat> Let's do uh, an Elton John song. I'm just going to play a, a song or two more. I think I've kind of covered what I wanted to cover as far as talking about this. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, I'm going to play Amarillo by Morning, George Strait. So hopefully what I'm talking about is making sense as I'm playing. 
um, meaning I'm, I'm playing the melody, sometimes by itself, sometimes with some chords behind it, sometimes I'm using the melody as, um, as, as a way of, of blasting off, meaning I'm going to improvise from the melody. So if I go... You know, I just use that as a way to start the melody and then finish it with my own little improvisation. A lot of fun. You can, you can entertain yourself and others for countless hours um, with, you know, maybe, maybe mainly yourself, um, at, at least when you're getting it down, with sort of messing around with this idea. But a lot of fun to play that George Strait song. Any other comments or anything? Let's see how, how far we are along. Maybe I'll uh, maybe I'll end it, and um, maybe I'll play one more song, and then we'll we'll end it there. Um, anybody like Talking Heads? Any Talking Heads fans out there? Hey Daniel, how much are my lessons for for private lessons? I charge uh, fifteen hour and uh, thirty a half hour. Um, if you buy in, if you buy in bulk. If you wanted to just one lesson, it's 60 an hour. So email me at mtguitarlessons at gmail.com and I can lay that out for you. If you buy five lessons, it's $50 an hour. But yeah, I love teaching um, and, and uh, teaching privately is the fastest way to get better. Um, so uh, something to consider if you, if you want to, to take your, your plan to the next level. And then there's the Patreon. All right, and I'll be put posting tabs on there. So thanks for checking those things out. Let's do one more song. Any Talking Heads fans in here? Uh, so this is called Road to Nowhere. And I'm going to clear my looper because I want to use it. And then we'll sign off, and I hope you have a wonderful weekend. I'm going to be busy this weekend doing some gigs and other things, so I may not post as many lessons the next few days. All right. <laughs>
All right, everybody. Thanks so much for checking in today and for your support. That was Talking Heads Road to Nowhere. And um, if, I, if I were to summarize a little bit of what we're talking about today, it's, it's to learn melodies on guitar and then think about what the chords are behind the melodies. I would say that would, is what I want to leave you with. So as you learn a melody and you're playing single string notes, think, what's the chords there? Okay. And then see if you can visualize how would I combine those two, maybe not right away, but maybe down the road, if that makes any sense. So thank you all. Uh, thanks, Daniel, for all your comments. Uh, thanks for being so active. I, th I appreciate that. Yeah, it'll be a fun gig. So the rest of you as well, thank you all for watching and um, check out the, any lessons you'd like on my channel. And uh, always feel free to, to leave a comment and say hello. And happy practicing. Practice a lot. And um, let me know what you'd like to do for the next live stream, next topic we can talk about. All right. I don't know when I'll do it again. It's all impromptu, Daniel. So I think I'll probably do it um, just when I'm, I have a busy schedule. So whenever it works out. Um, but maybe in the short near future, I'll, I'll start to schedule them out so you can, you can know. But I'll always leave it on my channel, so if you miss it at live, you can watch it while it, um, after it uploads. All right? So, thank you all. Have a wonderful day. We'll talk to you next time, okay?